Hey everybody, this is Chris. Today I'm going to show you in detail how to make a bow with a backing using just a few simple hand tools and wood that is far from perfect. Now in my previous videos I used perfect wood. In this video I started with a perfect hickory log and used lots of fancy hand tools. In my crossbow video again I used hickory and really nice walnut. So for this video I wanted to start with wood that was far from perfect and in this case I found an old oak pallet complete with nails and lots of wear and I'm going to use this to turn this into a bow. Now, I don't use electrical power tools but I do have a lot of fancy hand tools that you may not have access to. So for this video I'm only going to use four tools. A hammer to pull the nails, a saw to cut at the length, and then everything else will be done with a hatchet and a file. So again, I'll share everything in detail, including the measurements and techniques. Here we go. Now, I'd normally do this work out around my wood pile, but there's a huge windstorm going on outside, and it's really bad for filming. So I'm going to do all the work indoors. All right, here are the two staves. You can see there's nails on this side in the middle, and then there's nails on this side on the ends. Now I've pulled the nails out of this one, and so if you turn it this way, I've marked where the nails are and how deep they are. So the nail goes in about this far, here, and here, and then on the back side they go in about this far. And so this really defines where I can take the bow. So the back of my bow is going to be on this side, away from these nail holes. So it's going to be bending like this and all the stress is going to be on this side. This is where my handle is going to be so I'm not concerned about the nail holes here. And then I'll cut this off right here on each side and this will end up being around a 66 inch long bow. Now let's talk about the wood that you use for a bow. Now that is an entire video on its own. So I'm just going to talk about the fundamentals. Some terminology to get started. In this video I talk a lot about the back of the bow. And the back of the bow is a part of the bow that faces away from you on the outside here. This is the part of the bow that when you bend it, it's in tension. And this is where all the stress is, so this has to be the strongest part of the bow. First, let's talk growth rings. If you look at the cross section of any tree, you'll see the growth rings in concentric circles. That's the strength of the tree. So you want one continuous growth ring on the entire back of your bow. That means once you establish a growth ring, you don't want to file it, cut it, or have any imperfections. Because when this bow is bending, if there's imperfections, you'd get fiber lift, and then your limbs could eventually break. So one continuous, unblemished growth ring. Secondly, you want one continuous fiber down the entire bow. All right? If you see fibers that are ending, that's not good because it's a weak point. Uh, if it's wavy, that's fine as long as it's one continuous fiber. But remember, don't cut that growth ring off. Don't try and smooth it out if it's wavy. Make sure that you follow the wave on that growth ring. And third and lastly, you want to make sure there's no knots. Now there are people out there much better than me that can make a bow with knots in it. But I can't and you shouldn't try. So in review, one unblemished growth ring on the back of your bow. Continuous fiber. No knots. So if you want to know what wood is good for a bow, then just type the question into Google and all these great message boards will come up and you can research it there. Here you can see the growth rings. They go in this orientation. And so I want this to be the back side of my bow. And so I want to take my bow kind of like this. So that means I'm not going to be taking the bow in this plane. I'm going to take it in this plane because that's going to follow the growth rings. And that will give me the most strength. Now let's rough this out. There's a lot of rotten wood right here, so we're going to chop that off and get down to the good stuff. Oh, 
Okay, I've taken this in at an angle in the plane of the growth rings. So if you look at the front, you can see here's the growth rings and this is going to be the back of my bow. Okay, I basically reoriented the stave to match the growth rings. The stave is now two inches wide. All right, let's mark the center of the bow. It's 67 inches long, so I'm marking right here at 33 and a half. Then the handle is going to be four inches, so I'll go two inches on each side. Then it's going to angle out from there two inches more on that. And here's our handle. And I'm not going to put an arrow rest on this one. I'm just going to do the traditional approach and use my hand as the arrow rest. I'm coming six inches off the end. And this is where it's going to taper in. Okay, here's the handle. We'll turn it on its side. And we're gonna come down an inch and a quarter. So here's our handle right here. And then for the taper, remember the taper, there's a two inch taper here. We're gonna come down three quarters. Here. And here. So the taper is going to go something like this. And that taper is going to carry on out. We'll, like, we'll have to figure this out when we do some tillering, which I'll explain in a little bit. Okay, it's starting to take shape. You see the handle. I've thinned out the limbs. They're tapered. And I'm going to take a file and I'm going to smooth out this back side of my bow. I don't want any imperfections because that's where splintering could occur. So again, I'm just going to smooth this out. All right, let's take a look at the bow. I filed down the back of the bow. It's nice and smooth. I've also thinned out the limbs with my ax. And I've, I've left the ends a little thicker because this is where the string notch is gonna go. Here you can see the nail holes. Remember that this is in the middle here, so I'm not so concerned about it. Then you can see all the ax markings here where I've thinned it out. So now it's time to do some tillering. This is the tillering stick I used for my last bow. Basically they have a groove in it and then several notches which will allow you to pull the bow down and lock the string into it so you can check the bend in the bow. All right, what I've done is taken a piece of rope and tied it to both ends. And I'm gonna put it in my tillering stick. It's level. I'm going to pull her down. All right, let's look at it. Okay, first you can see that it's bending here, but there's virtually no bend here. So I'm going to want to take some material out here so this bends properly. 
And on this side, whew, doesn't bend much at all. You know, especially here, there's no bend, and no bend here. So it doesn't look too bad actually, but it's, but I wanna basically take out from selected areas. So this bends evenly, so the stress is spread out. So for example, this is where all the stress is. We wanna spread the stress out along the entire length of this. I'm filming down here. I'm cooking up here. What are you cooking? I'm making soup. Pumpkin soup? Yeah. Awesome. We're almost done. Okay, good. Pumpkin soup. Okay, I'm gonna mark the spots I want to remove some material from. So I'm going to mark it right in here and then right here. So the act of tillering is continually pulling it down, checking the bend, marking it, removing materials, putting it back and doing that again and again and again until you get an even bend to the entire length of the bow. And then I'll put a string on and tiller it some more until it gets to be perfectly even at the right draw length. The string groove should be installed approximately three quarters of an inch from each end, angled at 45 degrees. To determine the string length, you take the distance between the outermost string grooves. And for a long bow, you take that distance and subtract three inches from it. For a recurve bow, you take that distance and subtract four inches from it. You can make your own string, or you can go to an archery shop or order one online. Okay, you can see this is a nice, even arc, all right? Where this one, there's a lot of arc here, but not much is happening here. So I need to continue the tiller of this to even this out on both sides. And this down here, this mark is my draw length of 29 inches. And so I need to continue to tiller this and pull it down until this is evenly tillered at my draw length. Forgot my safety glasses. Very stupid. I'm almost done tillering, but I'm starting to see some fiber lift on the back side of the bow. So I'm going to add a backing to this to add strength to it. Now there are several different types of backings you can use. Traditionally you'd use animal ligament, which is called sinew. Uh, I don't have any. You could also use bamboo strips or hickory strips or even fiberglass, but I don't have any. Uh, or some more uh, common materials like linen or denim or even silk. And so I do have an old silk tie. So I'm going to use this silk tie to put a backing on my bow. Now I'm going to disassemble the tie and get it down to just the silk front. This actually looks a little bit like snake skin, which is also used as a backing. I'm going to spread glue on here fairly generously. really press it in. I want to get it into the fibers. I've actually I put this in some hot water to warm it up a bit. I'm going to wait for it to get a bit tacky and then I'm going to apply the silk. All right, the glue is tacky. Now I'm going to put my tie on up here and I'm just going to use a rubber band to hold it in place. I'm going 
gonna stretch this out a little bit. Okay, now I'm gonna stretch this out sideways. So it covers the entire back. Now I'm gonna press it down. Make sure it's even. There's no creases. I'm basically going to go from the middle out and drive this down so it's one even flat strip. Now I'm going to apply glue on the outside of this and really drive that in so it's one solid layer. Once again, I'm going to start from the middle and go out and press this out, wipe it off, make sure this is flat. The last thing to do is take my file handle and roll this out and make sure there's no air gaps. All right, now we'll leave it dry till morning. Okay, the glue's all dry. So now I'm gonna take my file and file off the edges so there's nothing on the sides here. Now, a couple of points. This silk backing will not increase the tensile strength of the bow, meaning it won't increase the draw weight. But it will strengthen the back of the bow, allowing you to tiller to a higher draw weight. The last point I want to make is about tillering. Now, typically, you tiller this to within a couple pounds of your desired draw weight, and then you take it out and shoot it 20 or 30 times, and that would break in the limbs and bring the draw weight down, and then you do your final tillering. Now this bow right now is in the low 40s in terms of draw weight, which is right about where I want it. So I think I'm done. Now this bow took about 10 hours to make, so it's time to go shoot it. Now I'd appreciate it if you could subscribe to me on YouTube, and you can follow the progress of my videos on Instagram, at Chop with Chris. Thank you. Not bad.